it's the next level. Is this the right time to go shopping? One way not. And do you? This is good news. What do you mean by that? Some air raided proper full. Some other rods and ends, I'll make a knockout bomb. Even for soups. Okay. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark, and I'm Steve. And Mark, we have there's only two episodes left in this season. Can yeah. you can you believe it? I'm just we're we've gone through this so quickly. I'm glad we didn't do two episodes a time because it would have gone even even more quickly. But I do have to correct myself. I, I made a couple of mistakes on the last podcast. I was confused between "We Gotta Go," which is the Louis Louis song, and yeah. then the song the song from Jaws, which is "Show Me the Way to Go Home," because I just watched jaws a couple of times and uh, <laughs> so i had this whole mix up in my head of the, the two different songs and uh, so if anybody was screaming at their uh, their podcast players when what are you talking about you're so confusing right now that's what was going on so <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we should continue on saying that this is a spoil full podcast for the second season of amazon primes the boys and you know steve and i have watched the whole season and we are now discussing these episodes from that point of view so you know if you haven't watched it go stop this and go watch it if, and then you know but why are you here anyway if you exactly. if you watch exactly. it you're here so go back <laughs> exactly. watch it come back so unless you like those ideas of being spoiled and there watching for everything you know yeah. So this is The Boys Season 2, Episode 6, The Bloody Doors Off. And the synopsis that IMDb gives us for this one is, When the boys in Starlight follow a lead to Vought's mysterious Sage Grove Center, they find one of Vought's darkest secrets and someone even darker from their past. Meanwhile, Homelander and Stormfront's relationship deepens. Yeah, Let's Stormlander. <laughs> Stormlander. <laughs> So we should just jump right into our uh, top fives. Sure, sure. Hey, man. Yeah. Want a fresca? Yeah. Thanks. Why don't you go ahead and start? All right, well, my number five would be getting that glimpse into Frenchie's past with his friends, Sherry and Jay, and how he lost them, I guess, along the way over time. Pretty much as to why he cares so much for other people, as we see throughout the whole, you know, the show. And, you know, he was arrested for his robbery and was offered to work with Billy's old boss, Mallory. And we get to see that little interrogation and what apparently why, how he got busted or, you know, the interesting facts of why Mallory is interested in him because mm -hmm. he used weaponized Xanax to stop a super behemoth. Apparently he was, you know, this soup was activated by rage and was taken down with Z xanax bomb to make him like a cupcake you know and mallory you know you could see that mallory likes the creative takes that frenchie does when when doing these uh plots and schemes yeah this was my number five as well and it was like it's it's interesting to see because we forget because we pick up the show thinking that the boys this is when they started but we don't we forget that they were doing this many years before i mean in fact yeah. the flashback goes back to eight years so they were together or they were getting that team together the boys billy's boys i guess together back then so we see this recruitment of frenchie we see like you said this uh the, i loved his little thing talking about the golden girls and how he had to make his own family yeah. and, and all that when he was hustling in new york yeah, it's just really, really good. I love the editing that uh, when we have him say to Billy, oh, I never get caught, it cuts right to him being caught after that bank job eight <laughs> exactly. years ago, yeah. you know? And we do see, you know, we get, we, we find out later in the episode why he and Cherie's relationship is so, you know, I mean, they're together, they're apart, they're together. And we saw them together last season in, you know, a couple episodes ago, he went over to her apartment 
but there's definitely still distant. And we learn that Jay is the reason why, that even though he saved Jay's life that one time, just a few months later, Jay overdosed again. Yeah. And, and didn't apparently, survive. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so it was it just it was like oh, it was just heartbreaking to to hear all that and then to know that that was the reason why Mallory's children were killed and that he's been torturing himself ever since and we're going to find out when we get to Lamplighter we're going to find out the Lamplighter's been torturing himself that 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 one night was all really was a turning point in all of their lives really. Yes, yeah, it was. I like that you you actually talked about the different because uh, I thought it was more than one soup that he had that he had uh, gotten rid of, but maybe it was. A, but it's, but still, it's definitely interesting that we know that Frenchie's kind of like the idea man. He yeah. was the one who thought about last season about putting the explosive up what's his name's butt up, the, <laughs> up translucent's butt, you know, yeah. and uh, and then and then Huey ends up you know detonating the bomb. So uh, he's got this this kind of imagination that he has. So yeah. Yeah, very creative personality, yeah. Frenchie is. And that will lead me to my number four, which would be the flaunting of Homelander and Stormfront's relationship, or we should say Stormlander. <laughs> <laughs> Billy sees it, you know, flat out on the interview on the TV and knows right away. Because, you know, the, he just used that word, the, they're fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, Billy, yeah, he, they're sitting on the couch, and he can just tell from the way they're talking in that interview that, yeah, in the very beginning, we see them stop a criminal, but things get way too sexual during it, and Homelander gets way too excited, and in the process, just caves in and he explodes the criminal's head in the wall with his hand because he got way too excited. You know, he was just holding him back by the head, but... Uh, oh, so storm, gory. Yeah. Stormfront, yeah, it's a big splat, and then the sex near the body, that was just nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and okay. we, we see more Stormfront's manipulation of Homelander, too, during this episode. She lies as to where, you know, she is going, and he mm -hmm. finds out later because he went to follow up on her. And yeah. he's he's showing that that love interest, like, hanging out in his trailer, and he's got the flowers, and he con consistently is getting, like, jealous or angered. Mm -hmm. And then he just winds up burning it down. Yeah, and he it throws that tantrum, you know. Yeah, it definitely shows his immaturity in relationships. Kind yeah, of thing, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so gory. Just, just really, really great stuff. There's a lot of stuff in this episode. Uh, so yeah. my number four is is the the deep when he's trying to kind of recruit a train to the Church of the Collective, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and that looked like a GoPro. Was that like a, a GoPro, or was that that he that he found, or it was something that somebody I guess was on the plane and they were filming it, and then mm -hmm. one of his fish found it. Yes. And I, I got a little confused on this part because so he found it on the bottom of the ocean and. What, I guess what we don't see off screen is that Maeve somehow is able to get this thing working so that when Elena finds it at the end of the episode, she plugs it into like a phone and she's able to view the video. And then, and so we won't find out, I think until the next episode that this is what causes Elena to break up with her. Mm -hmm. And, but, and, you know, but she does tell her that, Hey, I'm going to use this so that we can be together against Homelander, you know? And so I, I can't, I don't remember. I know, at the end of the season, she does threaten Homelander with releasing, but I don't remember if we saw them get back together. No, I don't remember that at all. And so if we, if we get to the end and we see them together, we'll we'll find that out. But then, of course, that whole scene in the church, I'm kind of combining two points with my number four. <laughs> yes, yeah. But uh, that, that whole truth exchange that he has where he talked about how jealous he was of A-Train. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we get some more information at the church because – the, the church guy there knows all the stuff about A-Train, knows what's going on with his heart, knows that he's in debt mm -hmm. and all this. And it's, it's an interesting thing, again, looking at this scene from what we know at the end of the season, we know that Deep is still not going to be back in the Seven, that A-Train is going to be the one who's able to get back into the Seven because they have to show. So it's, it, it's kind of interesting, though, to see <laughs> them kind of going back and forth here. Yeah. They're all messed up, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. My number three, well, that would be the the asylum investigation with Annie and the boys. Uh, Billy sets his sights on her as she blasts a hole in the gate. You know, he's got her in his gun sights. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's still torn with her in his trusts of any soups at this point. And we see that later on in another scene. But he needs her for that job. 
he needs right. her for Huey too, because we see that later on. Once inside, you know, Frenchie and Mother's Milk will, you know, they see all the soups that are imprisoned inside, and we see Lamplighter with Stormfront talking to that one patient, and then Lamplighter, you know, just kills him, eliminates yeah. him, and not giving Stormfront because the the patient didn't give Stormfront what she wanted, right. apparently. Yeah, he and, wanted he wanted to see his family, and she wasn't going to let him see his family. So yeah, and this is where Stormfront flew off and lied to Homelander about, and that's where she went. Yeah, it's a little confusing. The timeline, the timeline in this episode is a little bit kind of confusing because we don't know exactly. Because you know Homelander makes like she was gone quite a while. Mm-hmm. But we, you know, we don't know how well the the, the Sage Center has got to be within driving distance. So I, I don't know. It just it was a little confusing to me it that was. whole back and forth exchange because he says he went to Vought headquarters and she wasn't there. But then he came back to the trailer and burned it down. Mm-hmm. You know, or we're assuming he that's why he came back to the trailer and then burned it down. And then sometime after that, they meet up again. So I don't know which time it was that she was at because remember she comes back to the Sage Center for the fight, and that's we'll talk about that. Yeah. a little bit later but when the when the people all break out because number three was my one really yeah, also was the, the i facility. have a little bit more to add to it though. yeah go ahead yeah go ahead. we get we get to see the, the soups that are in prison there that you know that stormfront's like trying to get all this information or testing on i guess mm-hmm. what they can do and when they when they actually do break out and cindy just explodes the guard in the hallway with her mind and is immune to bullets, apparently. <laughs> we get to see that acid-barfing dude, and he gets it on his own head and gets in his, you know, head just melts away. So I guess there are drawbacks of having an ability like that. Mm-hmm. And then you get that uh, tentacle stretchy <clears throat> penis dude. Mother Milk points it out when we saw how big his package was while looking at the, the monitor. <laughs> yeah, And that, that was, was just nasty, too. Yeah, was, yeah was... I love how, like, Mother's Milk is like, don't say it. To yeah, don't tell Billy. <laughs> you know? And yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like I said, that was kind of my number three as well is the facility. But I want to focus a little bit on, since you, you kind of already went through a lot of what I had, is just uh, Karen Fukuhara, who's mm-hmm. playing Kamiko, the female. I, yes. This episode, she she does such a great job of of communicating with her face and her eyes just what she's feeling throughout mm. the episode we see that when when they're uh, when when they first discover that stormfront is there and she kind of gets this look and you can tell that she tenses up mm-hmm. and then when they hear when she actually hears stormfront's voice in the hallway when when she gets there after the fight and frenchy kind of grabs her hand and we're seeing how this is going to develop now, and, and by the end of the season, we're going to see them kind of come to a relationship, some some some, some sort of relationship, because she starts yeah. teaching him the sign language thing uh, towards the end. Um, so yeah, it was really really cool. You talked about some of the soups in their different cells. Um, I love that t- they're walking down the hallway, and Lamplighter recognizes Frenchie on the gurney. Mm-hmm. there and that's what kind of sets everything off because then he tries to kill them and he releases cindy and cindy gets out but she can't really distinguish between the good guys and the bad guys she says she doesn't like liars you know you're all wearing the same uniform so i'm just going to kill you all kind of thing um but i love they give us this really cool misdirect that even other podcasts that we're talking about the boys at the time. We're like, is it, is she the one who killed Rainer? And so suddenly we have this, they take us off in this other direction with the head popping soup that we can kind of, that that we start to get a little confusing. Um, Yeah. uh, It it would actually make it confusing in a sense that you would think it's not that person that we, we know. Yeah. At the very end. And right. you think, you know, it, if you're just watching it episode by episode, the first thing you would think once you see her explode things, you're like, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah. Did they take her out of this facility just to do that? Just for this or- one thing? Yeah. And and that's where I think looking back on it now, it shouldn't have been a difficult, like it shouldn't have been a good misdirect, but it was because that should have been our big takeaway was, wait a minute, why would she have done something for them earlier in the season if now she's escaping you know so i don't i now looking back on it i go man it really we shouldn't have been misled by that but we but most of us were yeah you know stormfront kills a bunch she says she killed six i think of their their subjects they don't know how many actually escaped Mm -hmm. billy shoots the guy so i guess 
I guess we get confirmation there that not all soups are bulletproof. Like yeah. some of them are, some of them aren't, you know, Annie, and I, you mentioned that thing about Butcher putting the scope on Annie's head. Yes. Because she mentions earlier in that scene that he shot her with a 50 caliber bullet in the chest and it mm -hmm. didn't stop her. So we see him briefly put the, that, that sight on her head, mm -hmm. wondering if maybe a 50 caliber bullet to the head will stop. Would do you. something. Yeah. Well, we also saw what was the last episode when Frenchie takes out the tracking device in her and how they had to get it out. It was pretty hard. And no, that, was this, this, that was this episode. That was oh, the okay. very beginning of this episode. Yeah, because uh, he has that yeah. He has that little drill thing. I'm getting confused. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. sorry. It's because we had such a break here, but and that's my fault. But No, no, it's uh, okay. I don't know what kind of blade that was, but I remember she says, will it penetrate my skin? And he says, well, if this won't do it, nothing will. So I don't mm. know what kind of blade that was, but he Might was have been able a to diamond cutting bit or something. Yeah, something like that. And then he is, able, and that was that was kind of gruesome too, because the blood kind of explodes up on Huey's face, and you know <laughs> he's trying. And I guess they're lucky that the thing wasn't too further deep in her skin, because he was digging around in there for a while to get that thing out. You know, uh, thank God it was close to the uh, skin. to the surface. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. And it wasn't like in a worse place like if it had been in her neck or something like near the the carotid artery you know what would that have what would have happened there well know? it was purposely put in place by vaught i would assume so that right. way it is able to easily be, be put in in a sense that and then that's how annie knew where it was right and they wouldn't have wanted to be a danger putting it in either so that they Correct. wouldn't have really wanted to put it in too danger for spot. okay that makes sense that makes sense yeah so we're on to my number two. Yes, I'm just making sure. Yeah, we talked about Billy. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're number two. Okay, cool. My my number two would be Huey getting wounded and how Billy and Annie have to help him. They come together at this point, and it's pretty cool. They stop the car to try and commandeer it, and Annie hits the guy with a blast when she, the car charges her up because she was out of power originally. Mm -hmm. When he said you could heal her, just cauterize it. And she couldn't because she, I guess she needs a jump start. And, you know, the guy is dead. I'm not sure if this is her first real kill or accidental kill, but it was pretty much an accident due to the circumstances. And Annie has to be, you know, has to cauterize the wound to get Huey to the hospital so he doesn't bleed out. And then we see all the cute little conversations, you know, the conversation between Billy and... Yeah and annie at that point in the hospital talking about huey and how he uses that children's shampoo and mm -hmm. and you know he's like a little puppy <laughs> yeah yeah i love that that whole kind of bonding sequence there that even she and she tries to not let it happen because she's like no don't give me that look don't give me that look like i'm now i'm one of you because i've killed somebody now trying to get what i get what i want mm. because it, and this scene is still confusing to me every time i've watched it, even though i watched it like three times it's still a little confusing because I guess it was when the guy when the guy pointed his gun at Huey, that's when she her emotions got the better of her and she exactly. was and she siphoned power off from the car and then hit the guy. Because that's that's the only thing I can think of why she would have such an emotional response is because he turned the gun on to Huey at that point. And and so yeah, and I, I definitely think it was her her first kill, and I, it was definitely an accident. But it's still even an accident, still a kill. And this is something I, I don't remember if we if she talks about it much later this season, or if we're going to see something more maybe in the next season, uh, because mm -hmm. you know they basically left that guy out. There's no there's no proof. There's no way anybody could could connect them to the killing unless there's like cameras out there or something. Yeah, you know. Um, so so yeah so uh my number two is just the whole fight in the facility from beginning to end it, you talked about the female and how she <laughs> she the whole she pushes the guy down and then jumps on his chest and holds him down so that his spit goes straight up and comes straight back down yeah. onto his own face uh and and i'm assuming kills him you yeah know, just melts uh, away his face you see it deteriorate <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, you talked about love sausage, uh, and you know, kill <laughs> love sausage. That's what they call him. That's what he's even called in the credits. Um, wow. is, um, uh, 
I love that Frenchie is kind of able to use those prescriptions and he he thinks it's going to work. But then when it doesn't, Mother's Milk, like, I thought you said this was going to work. And he's like, I said it might work. I didn't say it would work. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice argument right there. <laughs> um, but you, you didn't mention that how Mother's Milk got saved from the choking was no. the female jumping outside and punching that guy in the head with her little bossy ring. And you can see bossy on his forehead yeah you know um, <laughs> so yeah that the whole thing that was, was just, kimiko yeah kimiko yeah. the i call it the females which she called yeah the female kimiko in the comic book they never do give her a name no so every don't. every once in a while i want to pay homage to that and, and just call her the female, the female. Instead of, yeah, instead <laughs> yeah. Of kimiko. but i think it, i love it when frenchie was talking to her and she just breathes heavily on it and shines it right on yeah, her shoulder exactly <laughs> Exactly. Like, like he could. I think he was talking about how she couldn't handle herself, or he shouldn't. She shouldn't be going in. Yeah. No, he said an orderly wouldn't be wearing a ring like that. Oh yeah, that's he, it. He, yeah. That's what you bought with your money from Cherie. You bought this gaudy piece of jewelry that's like not any good for anything. And, and then she guess, used it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I think we're to your number one. Okay. Well. My number one, well, that would be Stormfront's reveal of herself to Homelander, her just giving out all the information, mm -hmm. how she is so old, and that she was the first successful test subject in Berlin. That's because he, you know, she shows him a picture of her and her daughter, and he goes, oh, that's your grandmother. No, that's my, I think she said daughter, daughter. or granddaughter. No, no, she did say daughter, yeah, she okay. said daughter, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And then, you know, that she was born in 1919, married, bought, and had a daughter with her, mm -hmm. obviously the one that was in that picture that was old. Mm -hmm. And then shows all the hate and bigotry, just how she's just spewing on, talking about being elite and everything. And she professes her affection of not wanting to be alone forever and wants to be with Homelander. And then we get that Golden Girls theme at the end of the scene that, that fades into where we see Cindy, that... Uh, exploding heading mm -hmm. uh explode heading uh whatever you want to call it check from the uh from the asylum which yeah. takes us back to frenchy talking about the golden girls if you mm -hmm. think about it it all comes back to that it was kind of a foreshadowing that we were yeah. gonna get to hear that 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 theme music yeah this was my number one as well was just stormfront and i remember from when tv podcast industries covered this that there's as you're as the camera is 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 ticking over that box of mementos that she has there's a knife uh in that box and i remember one of their listeners said that that was a knife for the not the young nazis for hitler or something like that was that's what that is a, a representative of or symbolic of hmm. is is something like youth for hitler or teens for hitler or something something wow. like that that was given to those kind of like the boy scouts in our uh but nazis um kind of thing yeah. uh so it, it so it makes it interesting that even as as homelander is hearing this and he should be putting it together I and mean, he's a smart enough guy to understand that what she's that she's basically telling him that she was a nazi or she was with the nazis and they came to america but what we're gonna when we find out at the end of the season is he doesn't care that she was a nazi all he cares about is that the his reputation has been ruined at the end of the season yeah. Like he doesn't care about it now. Oh, that's fine. Whatever you believe, you know, cause like he, she's so obvious in her, the way she looks at him and she says, you're going to be the leader of this, you know, this army of soups that are going to look exactly like you. And, and it's just really that just the racism and the bigotry is just all coming out of her at that point. And if we, if we weren't, you know, done with the character at this point, we'd better by now, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think this is the last we're gonna see her. <laughs> yeah, even at the end, you know, she gets you know Anakin Skywalker and burnt <laughs> legs and arms, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, TV podcast industries actually mentioned that too, and their yes, their I podcast. They I remember yeah. hearing one of the guys say it, and they I laughed like I I mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we should move on to our notes. Yeah, um, going over mine and. Go ahead and talk about yours. I think most of mine we covered. Well, the first one I have would be the snide look Stormfront gives A-Train on the set after he sees the music being recorded for his quote-unquote anthem. Mm -hmm. And then his little talk with the Deep and Deep does the same thing with the Fresca. <laughs> oh, and by the way, apparently Fresca is back because there's a Fresca alcoholic drink that's out there now. 
So huh. I don't okay. know. Maybe that was preparation for that. <laughs> that um, like... is... Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Go ahead. Go, go on with yours. Uh, the next one would be Lamplighter is played by Sean Ashmore, who, as we all know, played Iceman in the Fox X-Men movies. Mm. I find it funny since he has a lighter as as Lamplighter to use his firepower which pretty much is his uh, opposite nemesis when he was Iceman in the X-Men movies. Mm. His opposite in the X-Men movies was Pyro, which does the same thing. You know, he uses that lighter in those movies if you watch nice. it. Nice. I find it funny that he takes on this role reversal with his previous superhero portrayal, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his twin brother is Aaron Ashmore, who's also uh, an actor and been in quite a few things as well. Yeah, yeah, they're identical twins too, mm -hmm. which is yeah. so funny too. It's it it's... is because because it's 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 funny the different things that I've seen them in because like Aaron was in Killjoys, um, and he was in The Rookie. I think yeah. it was Aaron was the one that was in The Rookie. So <laughs> it's kind of hard. Yeah, I get that a, it's, a lot. It's, I have to go to IMDb honestly when I see them in something. Because yeah. I can't tell the, I can't tell them apart. So yeah, there's a, another set of twins. I always get confused with two: one in Dazed and Confused, and one that was on Party of Five. And ah, yeah, those two. And I, and I think I met the one from uh, Moritz, and he goes, "No, that was my brother." <laughs> and I'm like, "Sorry, I Funny. owe you a drink, man." <laughs> Funny. Um, do you want to do your last one there, and then I'll look at mine sure. and see what we've already discussed. Sure. The last one I had would be the information that Lamplighter gives out about thought and using these people in the asylum as test subjects. You know, we get to see they were doing that to test to see what the effects are within people. Uh, he brought up a whole thing where it affects everybody differently mm -hmm. uh, between kids, adults, and how fast they're able to obtain it and how they're able to use them, these powers. Right. And Lamplighter stating that some just explode and others just have powers. And he's there only to burn the evidence when needed, when they ask him to. And that's yeah. really why, I guess, if they weren't willing to work, and that's why Stormfront said to burn that, that patient, because mm -hmm. they weren't looking to work with them at all. So they're like, yeah. well, we'll just you know eliminate them. Mm -hmm. So I think there's only a couple of mine that we haven't already talked about. That's that I found it interesting that Billy kind of conveniently forgets that that Kimiko is is a soup. Yes, is like he talks about the fact that you know that he doesn't trust Starlight, but yet he does trust her, and he he tells him, "Well, you're walking in there. You should take a soup with you," and that's why he sent Starlight with him. Yep. Unless he was talking about Kimiko, but it seemed like he was talking about Starlight there. He was. So he kind of conveniently forgets that Kimiko is a, is a soup as as well uh sometimes just i guess that just keeps it straight in his head because he has such a bias against soups that he doesn't want to think of her as a soup i i guess oh for the fact that she's on their side to some mm -hmm. for more than well, anything yeah. that annie has annie was the one that was in the spotlight and annie was you know part of the seven so mm -hmm. in this case kimiko is like has basically always been with him yes pretty much. yeah I mean, not always been but like like she's never been against them Exactly I guess is, is a better way of putting it. Yeah, so. whereas Annie's on the inside and he has mm -hmm. a lot of trust issues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the only thing, other thing we we didn't really discuss that I had in my notes was uh, no Billy Joel songs in nope. this one. I, I don't think there's any Billy Joel songs in the previous episode as well. So maybe we have moved past Billy Joel. I don't know. Uh, but definitely, <laughs> there, there was definitely none in this episode. The that like you mentioned already, the Golden Girls theme was the the big the big musical thing for this one. Yeah. And we uh, we should move on to quotes. Sure. So I'll start with one. And that would be my first one would be Annie saying, "This is where you live," and that was to Huey. And he goes, "Yeah, you know, it has its own charms. You know, the rats are like um, Pokemon with Hep C." That's a good line. <laughs> um, I I loved I loved uh, Mother's Milk when he's talking to Lamplighter, and Lamplighter's just going to burn him, and he says, "I right, listen up, man. You can burn us, but she's a soup." All you're going to do is piss her off. So why don't we all just calm down and live through this motherfucker? All right. Exactly. I just love the way he and, – and then when she kills the acid guy, uh, Lamplighter is like, okay, yeah, I guess it might be a good idea for you guys to stay. You know? Exactly. My next one would be Billy saying, never go into shark-infested waters without chum. 
And that's Billy's response to Huey taking Annie along to go to the asylum that they have to investigate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other one I had that is is there at the end. We talked about when Annie and Billy are kind of bonding there. That he says, you know, every morning he slathers his bum with creamy desitin. I mean it. He's got rashes down there. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> <laughs> and she says something like, I don't want to hear this or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. exactly. I don't want to know. Mind you, it's like, hello, you guys were together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last one I have would be Annie saying, Only a good soup is a dead soup, huh? And that's to Billy. And Billy just goes, Your word's not mine. And that was after Billy comes down off the top of the truck and refuses Andy Annie's help to get down. Because yeah. you, you could see it flat out. He just does not like her and what she represents absolutely yeah so no feedback this week nope no feedback okay. this week but um, uh we do have some news so we have a little bit of news i put this in the in the news so because i wanted to, to make sure we shared it uh according to i saw a, a commercial on tnt or a commercial somewhere uh that letting us know that we have an official release date for snowpiercer season two which is january 27th 2021 uh, if you remember correctly, we, we covered season one earlier this year. I know it's mm -hmm. been a long year and a lot of weird things have happened, but it was this year. I actually had to go back, Mark, in our podcast player to, mm -hmm. to make sure that it was this year that we did Snowpiercer. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. feels like it's been forever. It but has. Yes, it, but it was this year that we covered Snowpiercer season one. And I think even at that time, we knew that season two was like either already greenlit or already done. Mm -hmm. And we were just waiting for an official release date. So here we have it, January 27th, 2021, Snowpiercer season two. Awesome. And my trade paperback finally came in for Mega Brain. So now I got to pick it up this week. Oh, nice. <laughs> And to add on to a little bit more news, well, if you guys know, and Steve, you mentioned it, how it feels like it's a longer, now we have the Mandalorian, it's back. Yes, it didn't really feel is... like a year at that point, but this came out in October. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, it's October, you know, it started in October again, mm -hmm. so it didn't really feel like a year at this point. I'm like, wow, that was kind of fast, but then again, we watched and covered shows like months ago and it feels like a year ago yeah. it's kind of weird and strange but this week's episode was amazing because we got the wonderful katie Sackoff on oh, the episode as bo katan so cool and, that red hair that short red hair exactly oh, not spoiling it for anybody <laughs> and what they bring up within the episode is amazing too because the way she kind of makes mando look and his sect of mandalorians is that they're almost like a cult I love that. I love it that he didn't realize that he yes. was raised by a cult, a cult faction of the Mandalorians. But she, she actually respects it, and he keeps his helmet on. They're able to take their helmets off, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that was. I thought that was really great. I wish I had mentioned that in my voicemail to TV pod, uh, to House Podcasting, but I didn't. It was just that they still respected him, even though yes. they they say it's like a weird cult or religious cult, but they still respected it. None of them were like trying to get him to take it, take it off or anything like that. So. Yeah, and it was one of my favorite episodes of the uh, season so far. Oh, for sure. And on top of that, you know, at least they, they he trained Baby Yoda not to eat the, uh, the eggs. That was controversial <laughs> over the last episode previous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we should move on to podcast recommendations. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the only one I have is uh, I just it came up on my feed this morning. Is it uh, lost? That we have to go back. Lost revisited. Uh, a, how a joint podcast between House Podcastica and Next Level Podcast Network. This network uh, is back. They're covering Lost season four, and uh, Kristen and Ben do a great job. I can't wait to to listen to that to that one. Awesome. I got a a few, but the first one I'll talk about is Jason and his friends on House Podcast Hot House podcast go with their coverage of the Mandalorian season two, so you can hear you'll hear Steve's voicemail as well as mine regarding our feedback from this past episode that we just mentioned. So check that out. Uh, also check out Jason and Lucy or guess I don't know what he's doing right now for Walking Dead cast, but they're covering both World Beyond and Fear the Walking Dead this uh, for this new season. So Absolutely. the first season of uh, World Beyond and the sixth season of Fear of the Walking Dead. Lastly would be Run for Your Lives with Daphne and Paik. And by the time you get this, they, their newest episode will be up and they do Jurassic Park Lost World, which oh my I goodness, sent Mark, some feedback Mark, on. 
The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Oh, sorry, I got backwards. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. It is the Lost World Jurassic Park, but I'm just, I'm just kidding. When I heard you say it, I'm, I just listened to the podcast as well. It's a great, they do a great job uh, covering uh, this, the, the movie, and uh, it's, it's a great listen if you do. I just finished listening to it a few minutes ago. Oh, cool, awesome. So yeah, that's it for uh, recommendations. But if, uh, if, tell us for feedback they, and. Yeah. Yeah, other things for for this show. If you're listening to us on, you should be listening to us on just about any any of your podcast player of choice. If you can give us a review, please give us a review. Uh, if we have a way of reading that, we will definitely give you a shout out here uh, on this podcast. Um, you can check out our website at panels to pixels podcast dot com. Mm -hmm. You can submit your feed your feedback through fa our Facebook group, which is facebook dot com slash panels to pixels. You can send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail dot com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right in the middle, the number one at gmail.com. If you want to send us a, you know, an old fashioned voice message over the phone, hey, some people still use their phones to leave messages. Yep. You can do that at 845 350 2095. We would love to get a call there that's not about our car warranty. <laughs> <laughs> And again, that's 845-350-2095. You can also find us on YouTube at Panels to Pixels Podcast. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, hear what we have there. Next week's episode will be episode seven of the second season, the penultimate episode, as they say. I don't know why that's – I don't know why they have to have a, a name for the second to the last episode or the first to the last – whatever it is. Uh, yeah, the first to the last episode, the first – what is it? The second to the last episode? Second to last, yeah. Second to last. I don't know why they have to have a special word for it. But anyway, it's called Butcher, Baker, Candlestick Maker. So send us your feedback for that episode or send us your feedback for anything you want because we have watched the whole season. This is a spoilerful podcast. We would love to hear your thoughts on it. I can't wait to watch the episode again and uh, cover it with you next week, Mark. Awesome. Cool. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be found right here on Panels to Pixels, as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that, you know, that I love that my friends do. You can also hear me on a, on another podcast called Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. And the podcast is about those action movies, adventure films, pure action films, suspense films, and anything to get, you know, your adrenaline going while watching a movie. And Panels to Pixels will remain on the Next Level Podcast Network, so stay tuned here, and we'll keep you up to date, or just check out PowerCore Entertainment's website. So what movie are you doing next there on Adrenaline Cinema? Well, I just released this past week was a, an interview with Patricia Tallman, and she's an actress, stunt woman, and she's been in, in the industry for a long time. She Currently, she doesn't do stunt work or act, but she, she's building up a lot of stuff, so I did the interview with her. Had Very a great cool. time. We talked about Jurassic Park, where she was a stunt woman. We talked mostly about the movie Night Riders, which was done by George Romero in 1980. And you could check that out and hear her there. Um, and coming forth will be Con Air. Nice. With Nicolas like Cage. Air. Yeah. I'll have to watch that again. I'll have to find it, watch it again, and then uh, send you because that's that's a movie that I just absolutely love. I've, I yeah loved I'm, it since it came out and saw it in the theaters and uh, can't <laughs> wait. You know. Yeah, you could check me and Ben back out when that, that podcast comes out next week. Excellent, excellent. And for me, uh, you can hear me right here, of course, on Panels to Pixels, and I submit voicemail to various podcasts, like Mark talked about, of our friends that uh, uh, that do podcasts, and they they are so generous in letting me uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, beyond too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm on there sometimes, and uh, whenever I'm on a podcast, I will definitely let y'all know. But I send voicemail, so if you're listening to anything from Podcastica, Next Level, uh, Pirate Core, you're going to hear my voice more than likely. Yep. That is true. So that's our show this week. I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.